there's something new about me. Can you guess what it is? I'll give you a clue. It's not this bloody poster. Hello and welcome to the first ever episode of The Beer Chronicles. Basically what this is, is I have an old poster which is covered with many, many, many bottles of beer and it is very old. In fact, before Polarity Products I did used to have an old YouTube channel which is inactive and has been inactive for years where I reviewed video games. Um, it was called Review My Games. I don't recommend going back and checking it out because I was young, beardless and foolish and, you know, this... I suppose everyone looks back on the old stuff less fondly than the current stuff because they're, you know, they're not fully developed, they're... You know, you never like the way that you look as a child um, when you look back on it. And also, just the sort of things that you thought were good back then you don't think so once you've mentally matured well, I say mature no I don't think I don't think the old videos were bad per se particularly considering my age at the time and what little I had to work with in terms of equipment and software and whatnot but um it's just yeah I don't think my old stuff is as good as the new I wouldn't really suggest looking back on it. I mean the channel's still there, it's inactive but it's still there if you did want to check any of it out. But the reason I bring I bring it up is because the first ever review I did on that channel I believe was the first Resident Evil on PlayStation 1. But um, even in that video, and this is going back like 10-11 years ago, this poster was in the background. <laughs> That's how old it is. And um, I'm, I'm quite fond of beers and such, so that's why I was drawn to this poster. And it's been on my wall ever since, and I've come to the realisation that I've had it for so long, and it is old and worn, and you can see all these corners are frayed and teared, and God knows what has happened to it over the years. But yeah, it's about time I threw the bloody thing away, really. Uh, don't know if I'll bother getting a different poster to put there, or if I'll just have a blank sort of ceiling. I mean, back then when I first got it I was in a different bedroom and so I didn't have the um, sort of slanted ceiling thing. I actually had wall space to put posters on so it was a bit, uh, bit less awkward getting posters then. But um, no, it's, it's about time I got rid of this. It's old, worn out and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw it away. But I thought it would be a little bit fun if I challenged myself first to try every single beer on this poster before I throw it away. So that's what I'm going to do and I thought I'd chronicle it in these uh, YouTube videos. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a video for each beer and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drink the beer in the video and that's what it's going to be and while I'm drinking the beer I'll just talk about whatever I want to at the time and uh, I'll get started on today's. Today's is going to be Budweiser. I'll show the name there, Budweiser. Um, reason I went for Budweiser to be my first one is because Budweiser is my go-to lager. Whenever I um, whenever I want to drink a lager at home, I always buy Budweiser. It's you know, my preferred brand. My bin is currently 
behind the chair. There we go. So yeah, this is the one I always go for. This is my favourite, so I thought it perfect place to start. And I'll just get this open now. So. That didn't go well, did it? First ever Beer Chronicles video and already I spill a beer. But yeah, basically what's gonna happen is I'm going to drink the beer and I'm going to just chat away and I'll talk about whatever I wanna talk about in that video and I'll keep going until the beer is drunk and then that will be the end. In this first video, I'm gonna basically just talk about what the videos are gonna be like Seems um, seems like a reasonable place to start. So you can, I can basically explain to you, and you can be up to speed as to what to expect going forward from this. Uh, this isn't going to be a very serious series. It's just going to be a sort of vlog style thing. Basically, it'll just be me talking to the camera while having a drink. It's going to be very casual, uh, and as a result, it's going to have very minimal editing. I'll just cut out uh, useless spaces in my dialogue to make it flow better but other than that uh, yeah it's very little editing to do on these so I should be able to get one out fairly regularly which if I can pull that off will be a first for this channel I could literally talk about anything in these videos I could talk about the beer that I'm drinking and what I think of it. I could talk about films, games, TV shows, books, comics, politics. Although I suppose probably not because uh, that never goes down well on the internet. Current events. Anything that's on my mind at the time, pretty much. I'll probably decide beforehand before I start recording the video what I'm going to talk about in that video but even though I will maybe come up with the sort of things I want to talk about in the video and make a checklist like for this video I do actually have my laptop open next to me and I've got a checklist of the stuff I want to cover just to make sure that I cover everything um, I've not actually got a script just like a list of things like talk about this and this and this um, but it, it won't be scripted, none of them will be. And I may go off on tangents if something else comes to my mind while the video is recording and I decide actually I want to talk about this now. So yeah, it's going to be very, very casual and very ad-libbed. But I feel like that'll be a nice thing. It'll be, um, it'll be a good chance for you as a viewer to get to know me as a person rather than just a creator and you can you know see the kind of person behind the recordings I don't know about you but I think that'll be nice um, and of course if you don't really want to know then don't watch the videos I suppose obviously as I pointed out Budweiser is my go-to lager, which means that there are some beers on this poster that I have already tried before in my life, um, but during these chronicles, if there's any beer that I have already tried before, I'll still try it again in a video. I'm not going to skip any of them. Also, there are actually a couple of duplicates on the poster if you look carefully enough I mean I know you can't see it from here if I remember then I'll um, I'll put in a close-up just to point that out but um yeah let's see it's Carling I can see two of one at the very top and one sort of half showing on the left so yeah yeah that's duplicated and it's not the only one there's a couple of others um anyone that's got a duplicate I will only need to drink once I'm not going to bother saying well there's two on the poster so I've got to drink two in the video or make two separate carling videos uh, that's kind of pointless the, the whole point of this isn't to go it's not really about the poster so much I mean kind of but um instead of saying right 
I challenge myself to drink each individual bottle one by one. It's instead um, an exploration of beers, really. Um, I want to try all these different brands and flavours, and if there's one that I've already tried, I'm not getting a new experience out of trying it again, so what would be the point? Once I've tried a beer, the video will end with me crossing that beer off in marker from the poster sort of using the poster as a checklist of the beers that I've tried and then once the final cross has been marked off um, then that'll be it in the very last video I plan to rip this off the wall and throw it away and you'll all get to see that so hopefully by then you'll have built up quite a connection with this poster like I sort of have and might be uh, who knows emotional perhaps Budweiser is a good lager. I do really enjoy it. Also, one more thing I need to point out as far as I suppose the rules are, if you can call them that. There is a bottle in the top right, and I'll show you a close up of that. The only part of the bottle you can see is the lid and the little bit of label on the neck, which doesn't have a brand name on it. Out of all the bottles on this poster, and there are some that are you know, quite obscured by other bottles and as such are a little difficult to work out exactly what they are, but I have managed to identify all of them. That bottle in the top right is the only one that gave me any trouble at all whatsoever because I had very little to go on there. Uh, to work out exactly what it was. All I could see is that it was a product of the Czech Republic and that is about it. However, I did some digging on the internet and it took me a while but eventually I found a bottle what looks a lot like it. I believe that beer to be something called, and I'm probably pronouncing this wrong but uh, I'm going by how it's spelled because I have no other frame of reference for this. Uh, Eager Erbier, traditional beer, which is, as far as I can tell, an old beer from the Czech Republic that I saw a picture of an empty bottle online. And it's in a different coloured bottle but over the years sometimes uh, companies will change things like the design of the labels and such and also will sometimes change what bottle they use it's not unheard of it's not even that uncommon really every now and then they'll um, update it to something else and some like not to do that some like to keep it very much the same always because they think of it as traditional but uh, some do just change either as a design choice or availability decision uh, so yeah it's a different coloured bottle but that label on the neck it looks very very similar to the one on this poster and I haven't seen it on any other beer bottle so I can only assume that that is the one and if you recognise this neck label as a different beer if you've seen it on something else then please comment and let me know because I would very much like to know that because that means I would actually get to try it because with the bottle I believe I believe that to be I can't actually try that one because as far as I can gather from the very minimal information I can find on the internet it appears to have been discontinued for quite a while and they don't they no longer make it I can't get it anywhere um, the only thing I can find online is empty bottles however from what I can gather it is a Czech Republic Pilsner lager made by the same company who make um, Pilsner Urkel I'm, again it's one of those like I know the beer but not exactly how to pronounce it uh, Pilsner Urquell Urquell um, but yeah that one 
it's made by the same people um, and it they are both Pilsner lagers so I can only assume that perhaps they have a similar taste seeing as they're made by the same people it's the same kind of product uh, so my hope is that when I eventually get to Pilsner Urquell then um, I will have perhaps experienced potentially what eager uh, beer would have been like and I could be completely wrong in that they could have made a vastly different Pilsner Lager um, just for the sake of doing it or it could perhaps be very similar but with minor differences I don't know so I could be completely talking out my ass, but I I can't find out. There is absolutely no way for me to get a bottle of that because, like I say, it doesn't exist. So unfortunately, that is beyond our control. But I do remain hopeful that even though that one bottle can't be uh, can't be tried, every other drink on this poster should be. Um, obtainable and drinkable for these chronicles and if it turns out any of us can't be then I'll update you in a later video but for now I think it should be doable and like I say that one bottle I believe to be Ego Ubia but if you think it might be something different then let me know because if it turns out to be something different and something I can actually get my hands on then the Chronicles will feel even more complete. I mean, that's it. I've covered everything that I put on the checklist. This first video was just basically going to be what all these videos are going to be about. And I've covered everything. I think there's nothing else really to go over. It's, it's a simple enough premise. And, you know, it's very apparent what it's going to be like. Um, it won't always be as informative as this one has been. They are very casual and some of them might just be opinion based or whatever. I might talk about uh, uh, my, my feelings on Dragon Ball GT for instance. So you may know from a previous video I did with my friend Aiden that uh, he and I are Dragon Ball fans. And everyone's got an opinion on GT so that might be something I'll cover in the future. Uh, just things like that, they don't always have to be informative, just, you know, having a bit of a chat, bit of a natter, while having a drink. You know when you go out for a drink with your friends and you, uh, you, know, you have a drink in a natter, this is going to be that, only, you know, you might not be drinking at the same time, or you might if you want to, in fact, um, the title of the video will say what drink it is, so if you want to have the same drink along with me, then uh, feel free to challenge yourself. I'm looking forward to this um, series going forward. I think it's, you know, it's going to be interesting. It's going to open myself up to some of the flavours of beers that I haven't tried before. And who knows, maybe uh, the king of beers will end up losing their crown. Who's to say? I doubt it. Though this is a bloody good beer. covered everything I wanted to cover and I'm not even halfway through the bottle. I suppose that's what happens when you get a uh, 660 milliliter bottle. There's more than a pint in this thing. Um, but I got these from a uh, supermarket where they had like a collection of different bottles on offer so it was like four for the price of three and four, well, I'll get four of the ones that are on this poster and uh, stock up like that so uh, hence the giant Budweiser bottle, but I am going to finish it in the video. Um, I've just got to try and think of something to talk about now to pad out the time. I'll try and drink a bit quicker to make it easier on myself, but um, hell, seeing as I brought it up, let's talk about GT. Dragon Ball GT, I think, gets a lot of hate that is deserved. You know what's convenient? I've just realised this. We're talking about Dragon Ball now. I'm wearing <laughs> a Dragon Ball shirt, so <laughs> it seems very fitting that I, uh, I put this on today, completely by accident. Um, I didn't put the shirt on by accident, but the fact that it's uh, it's um, relevant 
was very much unintended. Uh, but I didn't um, I didn't walk around the house today and go, oh, well, bloody hell, I've got a shirt on, how did that happen? <laughs> but yeah, Dragon Ball GT um, gets a lot of hate, and sort of deservedly so. It is the inferior of all the Dragon Ball series, I think. Z is, hands down, the best, and that isn't really going to be a surprise to anyone when I say that, because that's the general consensus, and I do fully agree with it, Z is the best. I absolutely love Super. I think out of the sort of Z sequels, I think Super is far superior to GT. And I also love original Dragon Ball. I'm trying to decide now off the top of my head which I prefer out of original Dragon Ball and Super, and it's a difficult decision. I suppose I'm gonna have to side with original Dragon Ball for the nostalgia and for the general goofy comedy, the, you know, the Toriyama comedy, which, you know, only he can do, and that's one of the reasons why GT was so bad, because they tried to mimic his comedy style, but without him doing it, it's very difficult to pull off. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to have to say I probably prefer original Dragon Ball to Super, but I do absolutely love Super as well, and there are some fantastic moments in it. But GT itself, I don't hate. I do not hate GT. I own all of the Dragon Ball series on DVD. I have GT as well. Uh, Super, I have on Blu-ray. But GT I have on DVD and I do still watch it um, and I enjoy it for what it is. I think even though it isn't the best, in fact it is the worst of the lot and does sort of deserve to be looked down on in that regard, it doesn't necessarily deserve to be completely looked down on as a product, uh, as its own thing. I think it's fine, I can watch it and enjoy it. Um, I'd say it deserves the dislike, but it doesn't necessarily deserve all the absolute hate that it gets. It's not that bad. It's kinda bad, but not that bad. Not so much that you should just outright shun the whole thing. It's the way I've always looked at it is it's a series of fantastic concepts, truly wonderful ideas for Dragon Ball stories, just poorly executed. The Black Star Dragon Balls kind of make no sense, but, you know, interesting idea and the whole concept of you know, relying on these things to make a wish, then having a negative effect is, you know, a very interesting and good message of the show. And that's one way to do it with the Black Star Dragon Balls. So you make a wish, but uh, you're gonna have to, um, you're gonna have to think about your planet being destroyed if you can't get those balls back afterwards. So yeah, so that was an interesting idea. Um, going back to the roots of the show and having this sort of episodic adventure series um, with the comedy aspects brought back in from the original Dragon Ball. It's not a bad idea. It worked before. It can work again. It didn't work again, but it could. Um, I think doing both at the same time was a mistake because the whole concept behind what's going on with the Black Star Dragon Balls is very, very serious. And then they go off on these goofy adventures and they take it at their own pace because, you know, they're having fun whilst trying to save the Earth from exploding. Uh, so yeah, the, the two very much juxtapose each other and it doesn't work as a result of that. You know, you, it's, it's one of those things you can have serious and comedic at the same time and that can work if you do it right but when something is like earth destroyingly serious and 
you know, comedically focused at the same time. You have to be very, very good at writing to make it work. And I'm not saying that the staff at Toei who worked on GTE aren't good at writing, but if they're good enough to write that kind of thing, then they were having an off day at the time because it just didn't work. The two were very much... The two concepts were very much at odds with each other and it just did not work out good. Super 16, that was just a shit idea, they shouldn't have done that at all to begin with and I consider that, even though it's not based on a manga so you can't technically call it filler, it feels like filler. It's like, you know, they finished the Black Star Dragon Ball so I've been like, okay we want to do this baby thing but while we're working on that let's shove this in there to pad out time and that's what it feels like um, just how short that saga was as well sort of lends a bit of validity to that theory uh, like they weren't serious about it they just put it in to pad it out um, it, it was shit what else can I say that's one of the examples of not even a good concept it was just it should never have been done moving on uh, baby this will shock no one. Everyone says it, and I fully agree. As a villain, baby, fantastic, fantastic concept. Uh, if handled right, had the potential to be the best villain in all of Dragon Ball, because I don't know if you're familiar with the term shit-tier villain. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're a shit villain. It's just a term given to a villain who is basically the story behind them being a villain has no real like, backstory as to what happened to them to make them this way. You know, it's a shit tier villain is a villain who is a villain because they are evil and they want the power. They are evil. They want power or money or whatever. And so they are a villain and that is all it is. If someone did something evil in order to gain riches because they want money, then they're a shit tier villain. If someone did something evil to gain riches so that they could afford the cancer treatment for their dying mother, then they are not a shit tier villain. But they are still doing evil stuff to get that, and it's one of those cases where they're a villain because they think the ends justify the means. But the ends don't always justify the means, but there is a grey area there and that is interesting character and storytelling whereas just being evil for the sake of being evil isn't but as long as that particular villain you know has a certain presence and you know, just, they're awesome to watch basically then it can still work if that's what you're going for shit tier villain does not necessarily mean that they are shit after all Freezer is a shit tier villain, but he's a fucking awesome villain. But Baby in GT was absolutely not a shit tier villain. The concept behind him um, being a development of the war between the Tuffles and the Saiyans, and he has now arrived to get back at Goku and Vegeta because they are Saiyans and what the Saiyans did to the Tuffles um, is fueling his uh, his hatred of them. It's a wonderful idea. It's got a lot of backstory behind it and a lot of potential. And they didn't really do anything with it. Being able to take over the other members of the Z Fighters and use them to fight against other members of the Z Fighters has potential as well because of the whole, you know, having to defeat someone that you care about. It, it's a common used trope, but it can be interesting if done right. Uh, so it had all these good things going for it. But then, I don't know, it's just written in, some of, in such a way that made it kind of boring. Ultimately, it was one of those situations where it had such potential, the concept behind him was absolutely fantastic, but then they just sort of didn't really pull it off that well. The one good thing about that, though, is the 
Super Saiyan 4 transformation, which was absolutely phenomenal, and I will fight you to the death if you say that Super Saiyan 4 was not a good transformation. Uh, it's sublime. And that's all I've got to say on Super Saiyan 4, it is sublime. And then the Shadow Dragons again. A fantastic concept on its own and also an absolutely wonderful concept to end the series on. The whole idea of the entire time you've been using these these Dragon Balls to grant wishes to make things easier for you and the fact that they were supposed to be used sparingly but because of the technology they have making them be able to find them quickly and use them a lot more than they were supposed to, they've basically become over-reliant on them. And this whole concept of, you know, becoming over-reliant on this deus ex machina has consequences, negative ones, and that is expressed in the form of the Shadow Dragons. It's like, you know, be careful what you wish for. If you rely on these wishes to get you through situations instead of your own, you know, hard work and effort. There's going to be consequences to that, and it's a wonderful idea. And the whole concept of the show itself being about these magical balls that grants wishes, that is the perfect way to end it. To say, you know, you've been using these the whole time, but you don't need them. Only use them when essential. And other than that, rely on yourself, your own ability, your own effort, train to get to where you need to be in order to pull these achievements off, just put in the hard work and the effort and don't rely on something else to do it for you all the time and it's a wonderful idea and some of the dragons were just shit. This this had the opportunity to be your magnum opus and you just didn't put the effort in you made some of them like stupid and comedic and goofy and they really shouldn't have been they should have been a fucking presence to be in awe of and to fear and you just didn't do that had such such potential and it really hurts me that it, they didn't uh, use that because it was it could have been the best Dragon Ball we've ever seen and they just half assed it. I do love the Super Saiyan 4 Gogeta fight that's awesome and the last episode of GT is absolutely fantastic absolutely phenomenal if only the same amount of exquisite writing and love and care for the series went into the rest of GT. That last episode, though, of GT is absolutely perfect and is by far better than the last episode of Z. The last episode of Z isn't actually that great. I don't like how Goku left everyone he loved just to go off and train Oob. I don't like that. And Oob was very underutilised in GT to say that he was like, you know, he was the one Goku put his effort and faith into and then he just ended up being nothing by the end of it. But, um, no, that last episode of GT, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. So yeah, that's my basic overall thoughts on GT, is that it's a series with fantastic ideas and concepts which are the same thing and it really had such potential and it can still be okay and fun to watch um, but it squandered its potential and was far less than what it could have and should have been and even though I can still watch it and enjoy it for what it is it is by no means at the same level as the other Dragon Ball series, which are just far superior. A few highlights, the animation and um, art style 
of GT. It was probably the best we'd seen to that uh, point. Drawn beautifully, animated well, and it was the colours were just wonderful. It, it looked amazing. It looked absolutely amazing. The music used, um, the the theme tune for the show, I absolutely adore that music and the different variations used in the background throughout um, suit it really well, it's really wonderful and the other music used in GT it's in, in terms of just its music it is absolutely amazing but like I say other than that and the occasional time when they pull off something well like uh, Super Saiyan 4 being a great example of that and even the way that that transformation was achieved being through controlling a Super Saiyan Uzaru which you know is interesting and not um, you know not something we've seen before it brings a lot of new stuff to the table and it's you know it's, it's refreshing to see a Super Saiyan transformation that isn't just oh you can go Super Saiyan now but what if you went even stronger so much stronger that you can just transform again it's, oh, it, do something different to transform and that's what they did and the way they achieved it was you know clever and the way that they executed it was great and the design chef's kiss absolutely beautiful design on Super Saiyan 4 but yeah other than that the show is just a series of wonderful concepts poorly executed and I do think that GT could have been one of the greatest series if it was just written better. It was... The ideas they came up with were great ideas and they just... They either didn't put the effort in or they, whoever was on the staff at the time didn't have the right skill to pull it off. But it just ended up being underwhelming when it really, really should have overwhelmed us like, extortionately. <sighs> that is my beer finished. And at just about the time when I finished talking about GT, so that worked out uh, perfectly, didn't it? I can't be asked. To set up the camera in a different position right now. Luckily, the Budweiser is on the bottom row. So we can cross that one off. And admittedly, this marker pen doesn't show up very well, so I'll try and make that a bit thicker. Yeah. It's not great, but it'll do. Yeah, that was the first episode of the Beer Chronicles. Finished the Budweiser. Didn't really talk much about the beer itself, although I did a bit. But, you know, it's, it's one of those when you've drunk it for so long and you're that used to it. And I'm going to lower you a bit. When you've drunk it for that long and you're that used to it, then it's difficult to talk about it in terms of, like, flavours and such because it's just so... It's difficult to point out things that aren't new, if that makes sense. Um, I've just been drinking it for so long that I just already accept it's great without thinking, hmm, this is great because it has these notes of and you know, such like that. But no, it's just it's a really nice log and I really like it. Um, which is apparent from the fact that it is my favourite and my go-to. So yeah. Um, Hopefully you enjoyed this first episode and hopefully you'll look forward to the next one and we'll actually watch it as well. Um, if you do want to know when the next one's up then please consider subscribing to the channel so that uh, you can be notified when these videos go up because like everything else on this channel I'm not really going to have a schedule, it'll just be as and when they're ready. Uh, so subscribe to be notified and to actually be notified click the notification bell as well. Um, yeah, if you like this, then please let me know by clicking the like button down below. And if you don't like this, then feel free to press dislike as well. That way I know that you don't like it. Comment below what your favourite beer is. And also what you thought of Dragon Ball GT, because I'm a big Dragon Ball fan, so I'd like to hear that. And also comment if you 
know that uh, beer bottle and top like to be a different beer because that would really be useful to me if it turns out to not be what I thought it was and turns out to be something I could actually get. So please let me know if um, if you know that to be a thing. But uh, other than that, that is it. This episode is over. I'll see you in the next one. Look forward to that and goodbye.